I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Debbie, here with Nketji Okoro, Carol, creator and producer of NBC's Missing Persons Drama Found. NK, the yeah. crime drama, missing persons drama, it's a staple in American television. So what was it about Found that sets it apart from other series in the genre that people maybe aren't aware of before they come into the show? Um, well, I think the thing that sets it apart is it is as much about the characters' lives as it is about the cases they solve every week. Um, and their cases are very specific. It is about the missing ones in marginalized communities that um, often don't get looked for in the same way. And so that in itself sort of sets it apart from what we normally see in our missing person shows. Um, but then there is a sort of thriller-esque serialized storyline that carries us through the season that sort of explains our hero's journey and why she is the way she is. Yeah, and, you know, Gabby, played by Chanel Hampton, is fierce. She's so compelling as a leading lady. Was it? Did it take you long to, to cast that? I mean, that's such a pivotal um, character in the show. If she doesn't work out, the show's not going to work. So tell me about that. Absolutely. I mean, the role of Gabby Mosley, she is a, you know, a woman who as a teenager was, was kidnapped um, and held in captivity for a year, saved herself and then grew up and swore she'd never let, let it happen to anyone else. So you think about a character of that magnitude and the depth that has to be portrayed in that character. And yeah, if you don't find the right leading lady, you know, the show's done. And so the role was actually originally written for someone slightly younger than our Gabby Mosley today. Um, and then I was on a Zoom meeting with Shanola Hampton for a directing gig because she also directs. And we were just getting started with casting the pilot. And I just kept looking, looking at her on the Zoom. And poor Shanola, because she's doing the whole thing and she's doing her directing presentation and it's fantastic, but I just kept staring at her. And finally she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, can I send you a script? Just, just read it, but, you know, no pressure. Let me know what you think. And she was like, okay, sure. And so I sent her that script. And I think in the time it took me to drive home after that Zoom, she'd read it. My inbox was just flooded with emails from her that were all one line. It was just like, oh my God, I must play Gabby. This is crazy. What is happening? Where is this set up? And that is how we found our Gabby Mosley. I, I texted my fellow producers. I texted the studio and told them I was convinced I'd found our woman. They all were familiar with Shinola's work. Everyone was sort of like, why didn't we think of that? And we hit the ground running with making that deal happen. I Yeah, I don't know what it is exactly. I can't pinpoint. I think it's her eyes, but it's the way that she's able to command the scene is she's very impressive. But, you know, we were talking offline. There's a great twist in this show at the end when you realise that, you know, Gabby's doing some great work for marginalised communities and kids and stuff who are missing. But she's got some real skeletons in the closet. So where did that idea come from? <laughs> Well, I mean, here's the thing. Everything that um, I create through my production company, the sort of mission of it is to leave the world a little bit of a better place than how I found it. And that was absolutely the intention with Found. But I also knew, you know, it's TV and I, I love TV. I grew up watching a lot of TV and the twists and the unexpected, those were the things I always loved. And so I knew the show I wanted to make, but I was like, what is that thing that sets it apart that'll keep people tuning in every week. And while they're tuning in for it, hopefully they're also paying attention to, oh, I could do a better job in real life of looking for missing people or paying more attention. And so I realized I wanted to tell a story that was as much about sort of recovery from trauma when healing goes right, which is a significant portion of the cast on the show. And then recovery from trauma when the healing doesn't quite take. And that ends up being our heroine. It's That's Gabby's story. We think she is the poster child for suffering from trauma, turning it around, turning it into purpose, um, and becoming this sort of formidable woman, which she is. But we also see by the end of the pilot that she is someone who maybe she didn't quite heal all of the landmines that were planted by what happened to her. And now what happens 20 years later when those get triggered? 
and you're faced with your demons head on, what do you do? How far is too far to save a life? And that is a question that uh, our character struggles with on a, an episodic basis. Isn't it interesting how trauma and, and you know so many of us have things that have happened in our lives that affect our trajectory over our lives that we can we can explore something so complicated and interesting and compelling on a network show it doesn't happen all the time and we expect sometime when we're watching um this genre that we're just going to see procedural and it's just going to be an in and out kind of story but we this is different and was was it difficult for you to to in, to uh, make sure that the show was also grounded in that kind of thematic storytelling when you were dealing with the network? Um, you know, quite frankly, once we landed at the right network, no. Honestly, I never thought anyone would let me put Gabby Mosley on network TV. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when we say she has demons, she has demons, but she's our yeah. hero. And I just, um, I, I love network TV. I love the immediacy of it. I love how um, big an audience it reaches. I grew up on network TV, so I knew I wanted to do it as a network TV show, but I didn't necessarily have a network TV leading lady in Gabby Mosley. Um, and, uh, but I was very surprised when NBC was like, no, no, we get it. We like her. We get that she's working through some stuff. We we get that she's not quite the hero we think she is, but she does mean well, and we're rooting for her to heal. And that was so refreshing, so refreshing. And so once um, we partnered with NBC on this, on a week to week basis, as we were sort of going through the scripts and pushing the envelopes, I mean, the pilot is just the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. I found myself prepared to have these battles, but why we needed to tell these stories and why we needed to tell them this way. And quite frankly, if we were making people feel uncomfortable, then we were doing our job. And I rarely had to fight for it. It'd sort of be that thing where I'd be prepped and start the spiel and they'd be like, no, no, we get it, go for it. Can't wait to read the script. And we'd be like, oh, okay, thank you. Great, <laughs> see you on the next notes call. Um, it, it's been a, a tremendous collaborative, phenomenal experience getting found off the ground. And like, is network TV? What's the what's the best thing? Is it because it's so accessible and ma you're mainstreaming stories about people that maybe the mainstream don't see all the time? Is that one of the great things about it? Absolutely. I mean, it's why I love watching it. I there's just something about, um, and I promise not to go off on my soapbox, but I do feel like there's something about network TV that's really unifying, right? You talk to your colleague at work about shows you're watching on network TV. You talk to your neighbor about shows you're watching on network TV. And before you know it, people aren't thinking about their differences. People aren't thinking about, you know, sort of what political party someone belongs to. They're just like, oh, we're both unified in Mark Paul Gossler is insane as sir. And we're talking about that. And all of a sudden there's a connection there with someone maybe you wouldn't have normally talked to. And one of the things I've always feared is that as content moves away from network TV, I'm, I'm, I worry that are we losing that thing that connects us universally as a community? Um, and so that's why I continue to create network TV. It's why I think Found um, has done so well on network TV. And uh, I have to say, I kind of love waking up to texts from my family on different coasts that's just, are you kidding me? And what happened with this? And it's it's that buzz of everyone's, everyone wants to talk about the previous night's episode that I just feel like I haven't seen in a while. So it's exciting. It's exciting to feel like it's playing a role in sort of unifying people and watching TV again. So season one is still unfurling and it's been a pretty big success. Are we going to get a season two? What's the story? Do we know? I, uh, uh, from your lips to God's ears. I've got fingers, toes, everything crossed. Um, when I originally uh, pitched the show to um, NBC and when we got the green light, I gave them a five season series document. So there's life in the show. And so we're we're excited that it's been so well received and we are optimistic for more. Wow. Okay, well, fingers and toes crossed on that one. And Kenji, thank you for your time today. We're gonna bring you back to the panel shortly. Thank you so much.